Several hours pass, and the dinosaur's hunt has not improved. She has failed several times at catching insects in the brush, and has been forced out onto the beach. The remains of dead sea animals occasionally wash up on the shore of the lagoon. This gives islanders another source of food, but makes the intertidal zone a popular place for scavenging. The tide is going out, and the rotting carcass of a large fish looks promising. As the Compsognathus begins to move towards the carcass, however, she hears the distinct screeching calls of pterosaurs flying overhead. A pair of pterodactylus, another type of pterosaur, very different to the insectivorous Anurignathus. Their diet consists mostly of small fish, and they spend most of their days skim feeding out at sea, but they won't turn down a free meal. They have also spotted the carcass, and they can fly faster than the dinosaur can run across the wet sand. Within seconds, the pair of pterosaurs land upon the dead fish, and use their sharp beaks to pierce through its tough scales, but this is not a task their beaks are particularly good at. In the distance, more pterosaurs can be seen soaring in from the tall rocky crags on the other side of the lagoon. Their high vantage point gives them a huge advantage when it comes to scavenging washed up carcasses on the beach. More and more pterodactylus fly in and begin to crowd around the corpse. The lone dinosaur watches on as the fish is swarmed by hungry flying reptiles from all directions. The constant clapping of their beaks can be heard across the entire bay. The dinosaur knows there will be nothing but bones after the pterosaurs are done. She decides to look elsewhere. As she nears the edge of the beach, the Compsognathus notices a seemingly unassuming mound in the side of a muddy bank, covered by low-lying shrubs. As she nears the mound, a quiet squeaking sound can be heard beneath the dirt. Using her back legs, she starts to dig. On the other side of the bay is a lone male Nathosaurus. This pterosaur, like Pterodactylus, feeds on small fish, but his hunting method is very different. The tip of his bill is flat and rounded with over a hundred long, sharp teeth protruding from it. He wades in the shallow water of a small sandbar. Sweeping his open, bristled bill through the water, he quickly snaps up any small animals he touches. This unique method of wading and pseudo-filter feeding is the result of a selection pressure created by the limited resources on the island. This unorthodox feeding method means they can avoid competing directly with the other pterosaurs. The pterosaur is spooked by a large object moving towards him under the water. He swiftly pulls his bill from the water and pushes himself into the air to take off. The startled Nathosaurus flies off, searching for passages new on one of the other numerous sandbars around the lagoon. The submerged figure was a Plurosaurus, a unique reptile related to the modern-day Tuatara of New Zealand, adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. Its elongate, meter-long body is streamlined and perfect for swimming. This female was in fact not after the pterosaur, but rather the same fish it was feeding on. Undulating her entire body, she swims like a snake and is capable of great bursts of speed, making her capable of catching the many small fish that inhabit the lagoon. After a successful hunt, she swims back to the shore. The reptile swiftly makes her way to her nest. Despite being mostly aquatic, she still lays her eggs on land. The mother begins to pick up speed, however, when she sees that her nest has been raided. Her sprawling legs carry her swaggering body across the wet sand towards the muddy bank. She sees that the nest has been dug out and cracked eggshells are scattered all around. Ten meters away, she sees the culprit, a female Compsognathus holding a dead baby Plurosaurus in its jaws. The mother gives chase, but it's futile. The dinosaur is much faster than her, and she escapes into the dense brush. The reptile turns back to a shallow, muddy hole full of cracked eggs, blood and two surviving offspring in a clutch of five.